Amway calls themselves the world's largest direct selling company and sells a variety of products from perfume to CBD oil to cookware, disinfectant, hair care, and more. Amway was created in 1959 in Michigan by two men named Rich DeVos and J. Van Andel. If Rich DeVos sounds familiar, it's because Rich DeVos had a son named Dick and he married a woman named Betsy. Yes that Betsy, who was the Secretary of Education under the Trump administration. The battle over funding for the Special Olympics. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos taking heat on Capitol Hill again today for cutting the games from her budget. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for joining us to discuss the Department of Education's 2020 budget proposal. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. I look forward to your questions. Calm down. Uh, your proposal also calls for major cuts, including this must be a typo, uh, almost $18 million in federal funding for the Special Olympics. Yes, that's correct. Really? Wow, you're going to hell. Unlike most multi-level marketing companies with their promotional videos everywhere and pretend influencers who smile happily for the cameras as they curate manufactured authenticity on their social media, Amway is not a very flashy or in-your-face MLM online. In fact, I almost never heard of Amway during my five and a half years in the MLM industry, nor did I ever talk with any Amway reps online. It's as if Amway is one big family that eerily keeps to themselves. But offline, I did run into an Amway distributor, an encounter I completely forgot about until after conducting this interview. It was in 2017, and while shopping for groceries, I was approached by a nice-looking man in casual business attire who appeared to be in his late 20s. I was in the vegetable aisle, and we struck up a conversation after he asked my advice on a recipe. He nonchalantly began telling me how he and his girlfriend recently moved to the area from out of state so they could be closer to his mentor and business partner. I couldn't believe how friendly and articulate he was, and my boyfriend at the time also struck up a conversation with him. It wasn't until several minutes later when I asked him, hey, wait, you've mentioned mentor and business partner several times now. Are you in network marketing? He paused and then said, yes. And I replied, oh, me too. I do it full time now and have been in it for X amount of years. What company are you in? His face fell a bit as he realized he was not going to be able to recruit me. And then he said, I'm with Amway. Not long after, he wrapped up the conversation and walked out of the store. I don't remember if he bought anything or not. I was astounded after our conversation and wondered what recruiting tactics Amway was teaching their teams, because whatever it was, it was working. That guy was able to approach me and be so relatable and so likable, he never once came off as a slimy salesman. But after conducting this interview with a woman we'll call the Amway Jane Doe, I now understand as their training regimen is rigorous and in my opinion, brutal. What you are about to hear is the most shocking interview I have done to date, and it's one I will never forget. You might hear some things in this interview you don't agree with, but I ask that you remain kind or at least neutral to our Amway Jane Doe below in the comments, because she was extremely brave to come forward and share the appalling behavior she witnessed behind the scenes. Our Amway Jane Doe decided she was done and no longer wanted to be the good girl who stayed quiet. This is her story, as told to me. I'm like literally having goosebumps and my heart is beating because I'm like so nervous and I cannot believe I'm talking to you because my boyfriend actually, when I started watching your videos, he's like, you're not gonna do one of those videos, are you? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, maybe, why do you care? You know what I mean? So yeah, here I am being rebellious, not the good girl.
Well, I love it. I love it. I love that you're here. Your email struck me as, oh my gosh, like one of the craziest anti-MLM horror stories I think I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And I was floored. Tell us first, before we go into like all the shocking points that you mentioned in your email, uh, cause you've been through a lot. You said you were with Amway for four years. So tell me how you got started in it. Like what made you decide to join and what were you doing at the time before you joined? Yeah. And actually before I answer your question, that's okay. I want to say that there are more stories like that, but as you said, since it is so predatory and controlling, people are afraid to say anything, you know? So I've actually, there's one percenters in a business that are coming out and speaking out against it as well. Um, okay. yeah, it's, it's getting crazy. Well, um, how I started, I was actually in college, freshman in college, new to America. Um, I moved here when I was only 15 years old, new to America, excited to pursue my dream and become the boss babe. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, I actually, my parents told me I should be a lawyer because I am trilingual. I'm very upfront in your face and I'm not afraid to, you know, tell you how it is. And they're like, you know what, you should be a lawyer. And, and that's what I started doing. I started studying business and my goal was to go into business law, constitutional law, combine them all together and make a lot of money. Um, so what happened was, um, I saw a lot of people on campus just like hanging out in a weird way. You know, it's like a vibe, it's something is off. I can see your friends, but you're not, you're like, you're following one guy, you know, and that's ended up being my upline. Um, and then this one guy, um, started talking to me and I was actually researching MLMs because I thought this is how you could make money. So I was researching MLMs and I actually signed up for one. <laughs> I know I'm like sucker for these things I guess I used to be a lot of us and, in there <laughs> yeah I mean you were in like five or whatever four I don't know <laughs> uh, yeah anyways I tried to take a shortcut and get into it and uh, at the same time he approached me so um started talking to me about my purse and he said that his girlfriend was looking for one then I found out he doesn't have a girlfriend. So it was just a technique to like, just get me to talk to him, you know? Um, and yeah, and ended up talking he's like, so what do you do? And I, at the time was working full-time Chick-fil-A. I was, um, I was interning at a law firm. My schedule was packed, you know? And he said, so what are you gonna do? Like, how are you gonna get out of the race? I didn't think there was a race. I thought I was just doing the right thing, but you know how that is? Like you start thinking like, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong. and so I agreed to meet with him. Um, and then I didn't sign up on the spot, but he followed me to my car. So I my mace. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. And I still cannot forget that because this is just and it's just ridiculous. He followed me to my car and like talked me into it. Like, I just like, you know what, screw it. I just got my tax returns, you know, I'll sign up. And I signed up by my car, you know, and that's how it all started. You so know, it started you like- signed up there in the parking lot with your, so he kind of like, re he really pressured you into it. Yeah, because I did ask him like, how much money do you make? Is it legit? You know? Um, and he said, it's not about how much I make so much, how much I will make. You know what I mean? There's so much potential. And I was, I was a sucker for that. You know, I had this American dream and, um, yeah, that's how it all started. I was 19, naive, came home, told my parents, my parents freaked out because my dad was a one percenter at one point. He was making like 150 grand, um, in Amway. My dad freaked out. He's like, you can't do that. You just cannot do it, you know? And yeah, so, story goes along. I mean. So, okay. We need to back up a little bit. And I completely understand that what you talk about with that American dream, because that is a lot of people's dream when they come to this country. My husband came to the States from Argentina when he was like 16 years old. Um, it's a rude awakening. We have a lot of yeah. problems here that we need to change for a developed country, for sure. Um, yeah. What was it, before we jump into your family and your yeah. dad doing it, what was it exactly about that guy who got you to sign up, who literally followed you to their car, which would make any woman uneasy? What do you feel it was about him that made you a little bit more, um, 
I guess, open to suggestibility because I know when I was in, a lot of the times they would have, we would have tactics that we would use where it's like, you don't talk about your vision as much. You ask them about theirs. You get them to talk about their dreams and their goals and to dream bigger and to like plant that seed. So what was it about you that made you open to, to talk to him like that? Honestly, I hate to say it, but I thought he was cute. <laughs> Honestly, I thought he was cute. And and for a while, he made me believe that he liked me too, you know? And then, yeah, it, I, that's the only thing, reason. Like, I thought he was charming. He was very good looking. Um, yeah, I that's, love that's pretty much honest. it. I like that you're honest about it because I think that I, I tell my husband too all the time, I'm like, my guard now since leaving the MLM <laughs> world is so... Uh, but there's still times I catch myself being too trusting with certain mm -hmm. things and I have to be like, oh, 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 no, 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 no. Like not everybody's your friend. Not everybody has good intentions. Don't just not question people and their intentions, you know, just because they look friendly or they look cute. Like that's, I mean, that's why you have all these influencers. I hate that word on social media <laughs> selling these MLMs and they look gorgeous. They look handsome. Like, I mean, it's, yeah. It's definitely a recruiting tactic. So I mean, I hate to say this, but sex sells, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, tell me about, and I'm just gonna call you Jane Doe, and I'm gonna say your name. <laughs> yes, please do. We're keeping you as our Amway Jane Doe. Um, you fun. mentioned that you something happened with your family. Uh yeah. and, okay, you said your dad was a six-figure earner. Tell me what happened there. So my dad was a six figure earner back in the nineties. Um, and his upline was, so my dad used to live in Tennessee and his upline used to live in Mississippi. Um, and you know, they grew really fast. My dad, my dad was a salesman his whole life and still is actually, um, he grew like a team of 300 people really fast in like six months, which is insane. You know, I mean, um, but then he went to see his upline and his upline lived in like, like, terrible place like it was disgusting he said there is motivational books everywhere like you know how people stack their products and when people stack books <laughs> no no offense but that's how it is you know um a ton of books the place was messy and then he was like well you're on stage looking like a hot shot and then i come to your house and your house looks like shit and then he started kind of observing it more he told me that he saw how people are being pressured and how things are just like, it's like false authenticity. It's very forced, you know, you just do whatever you have to do to make an extra buck or sign up another person. Um, and that's what he's turned. That was his main thing. So, that's and after cool. making a lot of money, they paid like, I mean, to give some credit where it's due, like he paid off his house. They were debt free in their twenties. Like my mom retired, retired, you know how they like to say that a lot, whatever um and had my brother and all of that stuff so there were money but at what cost you know right, right. and it's that's interesting that you say that he was a he, he was earning that much money they paid up all that debt he was in longer than i was yet he still left and that i think is yeah, one yeah. of the biggest things that from my videos that i've realized when people comment um on my channel they'll say things like ah, why would you walk away if you were making that type of money and it's because even at that type of money, you realize some things are not worth it. And they are, yeah. it's extremely stressful and extremely uh, toxic. And it seems like he realized like a contradiction with his upline <laughs> yeah. from what he was saying and then how he actually lived. Um, so how, how long ago did you get out? A year, about a year ago. I got kicked out technically. Oh, <laughs> I would have... I would have been still in, you know, and I'm grateful that everything went the way that it did. I mean, I told you what I, what I did. I'm not a saint, you know, I made mistakes, but, um, after being put on a trial of ethical trial, if you will, I'm like, I'm not going to drop any bombs until you ask me for the video's sake. But <laughs> at the end of it, I just got kicked out and that was a year ago in April. Okay. We have, for my viewers who are like, what's going on? Like, stuff all over the place. Like, I, trust me, we're going to get to every little thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's it's a okay. lot to talk about. So yeah. before we go into that and so being put on trial, correct me if I'm wrong. You were a 1099 contract worker, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, did something happen with your family 
when you told them you were, you joined Amway, what happened? Yeah. So my family not only was in Amway at one point, but they're really religious now. Cult religious. Like it's weird. Like women are not allowed to wear pants, that kind of stuff. It's, it's weird. So there's another time. It's all at the same time as happening. I'm growing up. I'm in America. I had, you know, relations with a guy for the first time and I was feeling so guilty. Came to my dad and was like, dad, this is what happened. I feel guilty. Can we talk about it? He freaked out, started following me everywhere, controlling me, like, you're at work, where are you at? Why are you at this somebody's house? Are you at your boyfriend's house? Are you at Amway's people? Whatever. Then I came home one night after an Amway meeting, which you know they last till like 11, 12, 1 a.m. And I was 19. I came home and my dad was like, you need to leave. You have to get out. You cannot live here anymore if you're going to continue doing this. He said that Amway ruined me, ruined everything, and now I'm having sex, and that's, like, the worst thing you can do as a Christian is to have sex before you get married, but that's another topic, but that was part of it as well, so they kicked me out, you know, I had no money, seriously, um, you know, I literally, I don't know how much did I have, maybe $500 in my, in my name, in my car that I still owed money to for. Um, so I went to my friend's house and she let me stay in her house for 250 a month. And I slept on a floor for like a year and a half. Was she so, in way too? No. Okay. She was not, but she would buy products for me just to kind of help me out because she knew me and she, you know, she still actually buys products now from my boyfriend. <laughs> she just, I don't know. She really likes them, I guess, whatever. But yeah. So you're okay do you think that because i grew up in a family i grew up in a very extremely religious strict family we were not allowed to have cable we were not allowed to have tv we were considered non-denominational christian with our church yeah. um yeah. but i went to a private pentecostal school for a few years as a kid and women yeah. were not allowed to wear pants we had to wear skirts uh we could wear like <laughs> shorts under our skirts of course but it was ridiculous i remember my <laughs> first day walking into that school i was like eight years old and i had on a bunch of lipstick because i'm like a drag queen you know i love makeup hey, yeah. and, I walked in, and <laughs> we were only like 10 minutes into starting the day and they're like um honey come here you're gonna have to wipe that off. <laughs> so i'm like this, this wretch who is she to tell me to take off my makeup <laughs> But it's crazy. Like, it's very, you're right. Like, it's cult-like. It's very strict. Women are not looked at as equal. Do you feel that your yeah. father was more upset about the sex before marriage, which is completely not wrong? <laughs> or yeah. do you feel that it was more about Amway or a, a mix? With him, it was more that I did something he didn't approve of. Um, so he told me no to Amway at first. He's like, no, you can do it. And I was like, you can tell me no, you know? And I did it. And he's like, well, you need to get the hell out of here because you're not submitting to me and I'm your father. So, so. and I mean, from my perspective, I do, I do not have yeah. children, but if I, I could see how your father, knowing what he knew about the industry would be mm -hmm. very worried about you getting in yeah. and his delivery Absolutely. might have been off. Um, I'm not here to malign your father, but uh, do you, what, what were you hearing? Like, were you talking with your new upline and your team about, how your family didn't want you to be in it and what were what was their response oh my god their response wasn't i mean thinking back they always used my um what do you call it like that word <laughs> through through hard times whatever mm -hmm. when you go through hard times they used it as like well great you have motivation to build it you know you need to push harder nobody offered me hey do you need a place to stay hey, are you okay? Like, I've never been asked that. All I've been told, like, you're great, you're an ass kicker, you can do this, you have a great personal story, now your dad kicked you out, yes, you're gonna build it, you're gonna build it big, you know? And because I'm like, I have balls, and I'm like, in your face, they knew that I'm gonna do something with it, and I did eventually, but yeah, it all went shit later. And I'm sorry if I'm cussing too much, I'm really sorry, I hope that's okay. Um... Yeah, I try not to cuss because I'll have to edit it out. It takes me longer. <laughs> but Sorry. Off, off camera, I cuss all the time. <laughs> I'm okay. I'll watch myself better. You're okay. So tell me about 
Um, and I, I agree with you. Like I found that in the MLM industry, the support you get is very superficial and it's always just glossed over with like, oh, you can do it. Or like you, you'll turn this hard time, your test into a testimony and <laughs> you can use it for your story. That'll help you succeed. And it's just like, <sighs> um, tell me about, you mentioned that you lost over $40,000. Now, I am not judging you at all. I just want to know how we got to this point. What happened? Yeah, that, that literally made me cringe so bad right now. I am curious. I need to share it, honestly, because yeah. I, know, I know it's embarrassing. I know, I know the shame you feel when you walk away. I, I was, you know, I drove a Mercedes um, that I bought after I hit six figures. I bought it myself. And then... Guess what? After I left the industry, I couldn't afford to fix it when the engine went out and I was like upside down. It was mortifying. And now I yeah. happily drive a Toyota and I love it. But you know, hey, I, yeah. I get that shame. I get that. It's like, oh wow. What did I do? What did I get myself into? Uh, yeah. So I, um, I started finally taking care of my finances and looking back on what happened. And I, went through everything and I was all in, you know, I actually didn't tell you, but I quit school for it. I'm, I'm like, I don't have time for school. I don't want to be a lawyer. I'm going to be successful and my distributor, you know? Um, so I started working at like a retail stores and whatever, and all the money I made went back to it. It went back on. And surprisingly, most of it didn't go on products. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. Uh -huh. It went on driving places it went on hotels it went on conferences it went on books it went on cds it went on me giving stuff to people like we would put people through the process to make sure that they qualify to be a part of our team and i would give them a book to read that they have to read it it's uh by robert kiyosaki business of the 21st century i don't know if you've heard of it um i've lost <laughs> oh yeah I'm robert not. kiyosaki yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> He's a smart dude. He knew the network marketing people are going to buy it like stupid. Yeah. So he was smart. You know, he did what he did, whatever. But I would give it out. I would give like a bundle of $200 basically worth of stuff to people that were kind of sort of interested and I would lose it, you know. And you were taught but, to do that by your upline or who? Yeah, that's what they did. They actually, um, they had tool tables at the end of every meeting. You can go and buy the tools. And I don't know if you know, but I just recently found out they get commission on that. They get commission on tools and all the CDs and all of that. I've heard that Amway does this. I've spoken with Scott um, and somebody else on there. I was on their podcast, uh, Buildings, Building Fortunes Radio. If you're watching, hi. I was on their podcast. They were in Amway and they talked about the tools and how it's like a scam inside of a scam because yep. you ha I guess is you have a lot of distributors who are trying to be these mentors and these coaching gurus and sell you their tools. So is, can anybody make the tools or does the, do the tools specifically come from Amway corporate? It was from BWW, the, the, the company within it. So it's like education system. So I recently found out after listening to a podcast by a one percenter in Amway, he said he found out that they make a huge cut out of all of those audios, all of those things. And the subscription just to listen to one audio a week was $200 a month. What? No, I'm telling you, it was $200 a month. Then you have a book of the month. Then uh, you have extra tools. You buy extra books, extra tools to put people through the process, if you will. Um, and there's so many times of like, hey, can we do it? Like, can we have a PDF? It's free. I can literally download it. And they're like, no, you can't. You can't do that. You know, and you're like, let me just go over to Canva and make my own PDF. Hello. What? Yeah. So yeah. They had, so they had a book too that they would have you buy as well. And how much oh, yeah. did they sell that for? Well, that was like a 20 bucks, 20 bucks a month on the, on the book. But the thing is you can go online and see it for 10. So it's obviously somebody's getting commission. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? The person at your upline who was, was selling it to you, but it, the, the tools are from Amway corporate. The upline was selling it to you and he would get a commission from Amway for selling it. Is that correct? 
not Amway, but BWW, it's an education system within Amway. So kind of, sort of, they're all connected. They're all connected. So, yeah. And what I've noticed, and I just clicked while I was there. Um, so when we do those big conferences, hurrah, hurrah stuff, they send us all to the tool room. And it's full of books, full of audios, full of CDs. And they're like, you need to buy this stuff because it's like, nowhere else can you buy it for this price. And I was like, okay, yeah, I want to build my business. I'm going to get it. But then I realized how they get commission is that they ask for my IBO number, which is independent business owner number. And when they do that, they know whose upline that is. So my upline would get commission. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's shady. So I was like, why do you ask me for my IBO number when I'm buying a book, books? And I'll spend like hundreds and hundreds of dollars every time. So yeah, it was, it's more even, it's more education driven than anything. That's where they make most of their money. And even if they're, um, their success stories, like in the videos, it says, not all the money is made from Amway Corporation. This is the shadiest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, you can't. What? <laughs> what is happening? Like, I don't even know. This is crazy. So this explains how Amway has been able to stay in business as long as they have. Because I I remember when they did like this quick star, they, they had a, a parent company or something or developed a company and they called it quick star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember like my parents' friends were trying to get my parents in and they were like, no, <laughs> but I remember they ordered a bunch of product. And I just remember thinking like, this is nothing special. In my opinion, this is nothing special. This product is not great. It's like random stuff. You could just buy from like Walmart or target. There was really no niche with their product, no specialty. And I just was like, how have they been one of like the OG MLMs like Mary Kay that have been around forever? Um, yeah. and now this makes sense because they're selling, they're selling the dream lifestyle through enlightenment. Basically, basically it's sad. And then <laughs> what another wake up call for me was, uh, one of my, uh, top percenters uplines was on stage talking and he shows our, this check of $2,800 from Amway and he has like hundred people in their team and I'm like, $2,800. Are you kidding? I'm like thinking, say hello. You're saying you have this all this lifestyle and you have twenty eight hundred dollars a month from what? Hello, what? Like, no. I remember. I felt so bad for even thinking that. I was like, oh my god, I'm deedifying my upline. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You know, I freaked out. But at the same time, I wake up. <laughs> you know, like you know what I mean. So yeah, and it, the most money is not made through Amway. It's through the education system. Okay, so forty thousand dollars is a lot, and you were in four years. Let's go through a list just off the top of your head of what you would spend money on every month for Amway. So we said, and I'm not doubting you at all. I, I believe you. I, no, that's fine. I want to like see, realize everything that's going on. So yeah. you, you would spend money on the tools. So audiobooks yeah. and PDFs. And then you mm -hmm. would give prospects, not even new recruits, but prospects. You would spend about $200 on them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And go on. What else? Oh my God. Um, I can just tell you by, I would, the way I would budget it is by week. I'm like, okay, this is how much I need to spend per week for my business because it's my business. So, uh, every week I would buy like about a hundred dollars worth of books or whatever so that I can put people through the process. Then I would obviously drive to meetings. I would have like five face-to-face -face meetings with different prospects a week. That was my standards. I was working hard. Um, then I give them all these audios and stuff then plus subscriptions. Subscriptions are $200 per month alone, just for the audios. That's that, uh, hotels and conferences, the hotel would cost like $200 per conference and 265 per, um, the, just being in the thing in the conference. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So all of that add up as well. We had to pay for a meeting to go into the hotel. We would pay for those meetings. Um, what else? But, and then, oh, the, another thing I would give a lot of samples out because I was selling products as well. So I would spend honestly, so my volume every month, um, for just myself outside of my team was about $700 worth of products every month that I would either sell or 
buy it so that I can give it to other people. So it all added up. You know what I mean? Gosh, right. Wow. I'm yeah. honestly surprised it wasn't even more than 40,000 after hearing that. That is just, oh my gosh. I had to sell a lot of product to kind of like keep myself afloat because yeah. I didn't have anything until I started working for corporate and I'll have a good job, great career, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I was eating Amway, literally just the bars and shakes and that's all I did. So you're not talking about corporate, like Amway corporate, you're talking about like a, a different job. Job, American job. Yeah, like, no, I would never, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow, bless your heart. Um, that's absolutely ridiculous. Did you ever reach out to your upline and were you like, um, hey, I have, I'm this much in debt. Did you, were you in debt? Like, were you putting it on credit cards or were you able to use some of your profit to buy it? So both. I actually, right now I'm paying off. I'm, I'm probably going to pay it off by next year, by the end of next year, but altogether it was about 12 grand that I, I was in debt for at the end of it. I'm like, okay, I need to get it together. Um, but yeah, I was putting it on a credit card and I was selling it, you know, and like with them, they would glorify so much of what I did. You know what I mean? They're like, Oh my God, you have $700 worth of volume. This is amazing. Can you share with other people how you did it? So mm -hmm. after all of that, I would be glorified for my work ethic and how much I invest. And after that, like, I was embarrassed even saying that, like, oh, actually, like, it's scary, like, but <laughs> I'm struggling here, you know? Yeah. Um, so I showed them one time, like, hey, this is my credit card and it has 11 grand on it. Like, I need help. And they just like chewed me out for it, you know? And I'm like, Every time I would bring something up like this, it would always be like, well, we don't teach that. Well, we don't, well, I'm thinking like, yeah, you don't teach that, but how do you not ask someone who works in retail? Like how, how the hell are they doing all these meetings and how the hell are they, you know, can afford anything? Like, what do you think? You know, don't act so surprised that someone who's so committed and being praised for it is doing that, you know? So I got chewed out for it and they're like, you need to stop spending. But the thing is like once the first of the month would come around and I need to place my order, that was not in the question. Nobody asked me how I'm going to get it. You know, nobody asked that. So yeah. yeah, it's very, they have to cover their side. They're behind, you know, they have to cover it. So they have to tell you like, oh, we never told you that. So if I ever go after them, they will be like, well, we never told her that. You know what I mean? So yeah. legally I can't do anything or even just ethically whatever I did what I did but I think you have to be very naive to think that they didn't know any of that you know what I mean of course um because they have their own income disclaimers or excuse me income disclosure statements that they can read uh that tell them annually how much people are losing and yeah I was chuckling to myself when you said that like you were glorified and getting all this recognition yeah. But you were know, like struggling to stay afloat because I remember that. Like I remember people getting so much recognition all the time and they're like, this is great, but I'm not making any money. And it's like, yeah. and I didn't realize until I got out that that is a huge tactic that MLMs love to use because they know that people aren't recognized often at their jobs. Um, yeah. A lot of us here are not happy with our jobs anyway in the U.S. And were put under, you know, extreme conditions and just to get some recognition, just to be praised for something is like huge. Yeah. And it really feeds into that dopamine fix in your brain and it lights up and makes you want to do it again. But then you, at the end of the day, you know, you can't pay your bills with recognition posts <laughs> and applause. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting like kind of emotional, but it's, as you said, it's helpful to share it because I never, never spoke out like this before. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I was so loyal. I would be the person who would, you know, place their product order before pay my rent. You know, like I was that person and I felt so guilty because there's people in my team that would like obviously come and go. And there's one time one person wanted to quit and Amway has six month money back guarantee. And she was a college student and she's like, hey, I can do this. Um, and I was like, hey, that's totally fine because I knew like, that's fine. 
Um, and I messaged my went and hey, can I message her and say, hey, you should probably return your product so she can get her money back? And they're like, no, do not do that. You know, so they say that they put people before profit, but that is such bull. That's not true. Yeah. You know? Yeah, not at all. And um, in what you were saying with how they would tell you, you know, you need to stop spending, but then urge everyone in the team and urge you to buy more for these incentives, whether it was a rank advancement or a challenge or whatever it yep. was. It, I found that too, that it was always um, what was said was not done. Everything was one giant contradiction and they would tell people to set boundaries um, for their home and their personal life. But then if somebody just gave birth and they're still like in their hospital gown, you know, one hour later and they post a picture of themselves saying they just recruited a new person. They're like, yes, good job. You're amazing. And it's yeah. like, hello, what about boundaries? Like, why are you applauding this type of behavior? And that was the only type of behavior, the, the pretty much work till you die <laughs> mentality. Like you can sleep when you're dead, like you're doing this for financial freedom. That was, you know, spend all your money because it's short-term sacrifice for long-term gain. Mm -hmm. That was what was rewarded and pushed yep. constantly, no matter what they said. So, okay. We need to talk about, um, I have a huge, first off for everybody who is watching, we're not here to judge. Okay. People make mistakes. I think my whole channel is like, Hey, I screwed up royally. And now I'm like yeah. trying to make amends. Um, so I just want to clarify that like, I don't condone cheating in any way whatsoever, but we need to talk about this because this comes into, I feel like Amway really overstepped their bounds here is from what I got from your email. Okay. So you were dating somebody in Amway and yeah. It seemed like he cheated on you. You ended up cheating on him. Okay. Sometimes relationships, things don't go well. Okay. Well, what was Amway telling you guys about your relationship? And talk to me about that and how you ended up getting kicked out. Because this is where I'm like, whoa, they completely overstepped their bounds as a 1099 contract worker. And I'm a little upset. Oh, I didn't even know there was a boundary in 1099, but whatever. Okay. Um. Okay, so it's a very complicated story, but I will do my best to make it, you know. Okay, so when I started, I was 19, small, cute little girl coming in the team, Russian accent, everything. And there's this guy, apparently, after a while, I found out he was preying on everyone. He was, any pretty girl was his girlfriend, at least at one point. So I did not, so they, in the team, they have a rule that you're not allowed to date within the organization. That's not allowed, period. Like, you cancel the date. So that's the team or Amway Corporation? It's the team, nothing with Amway Corporation. Okay, so your upline was overstepping to yeah. contract bounds. Okay, go on. Yeah, sorry, I hope. Yeah, anyways, um, I found out that later after we started dating, like six months in, I'm like, wait, hold on. We're not allowed to date, you know? <laughs> and then I was, I was so devastated, you know? I was like, oh my God, like, I am a bad person. <laughs> I'm dating someone. And it was like on Hush Hush, on DL. Um, but there's more tea for that. I'm telling you, like my upline actually is married to someone he dated an organization for 10 years. So hypocrisy alert right there. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. Okay. Anyways, but I saw them be together and I was like, you know what? It could work out. You know, like if we're serious and we show them we're serious together, it'll be fine. So this guy ended up, I found out that he was, he was flirting with everyone and I felt very uncomfortable. I'm like, what the hell? Like, why are you doing this? So, and he was one of the leaders and people like loved him. The girls loved him. He was charming. He was very manipulative and he would flirt with everybody, but he would ignore me. I'm like, wait, I'm your girlfriend. Like, how are you like talking to all these people and ignoring me? I'm like in the corner over there. So it was ex insane relationship after two and a half years we broke up but there's there's another story I meet one of my uplines fiancés and she's that's the funny thing she is from another organization she's like in the organization too so two of my uplines are married to someone within the organization and they're preaching not to do that so that's like okay 
So I'm, I saw her at the mall and she told me that the guy I dated for two and a half years had three other girlfriends at the same time. And she knew it all along. Wait, yes. So that he was, dating? That I was dating at the time. I'm dating another guy. So there's another guy. Okay. So there's two guys. You have to think about two guys. So I, I see red. <laughs> I freak out because in the middle of all of it, uh, after me and that guy broke up, I started dating another guy, the one that I'm with right now. And him and I were friends the whole time. He's a genuine, great guy, still believes in Amway, still believes that he can change lives. And he really thinks that this is it. And he's really a genuine guy. You know, I don't support it, but I love him. So, but as I said in my email, I went through a very hard depression where I almost committed, like committed suicide, you know, like, and because of that depression and of everything, what happened, I was, I was super overweight. Like, like I was, I'm not saying being overweight is bad, but for me, how I felt, I didn't feel good at all about myself. So I called up my ex and we cheated on my current boyfriend. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? So wait, you found out that you were, you left your ex and you got with this new guy and then the, you found out that your ex cheated on you with three people and so you called him up and and cheated on your new guy is that correct no i'm so sorry so i found out afterwards afterwards i cheated with him on my boyfriend i found out afterwards i'm so sorry so you um, were still with him when you found out that you, you were still with the guy number one i was with my current boyfriend when i found out yeah okay, okay. are you there hold on, hold on. okay <laughs> we're talking about Boyfriend number one is, we'll call boyfriend number one the first guy who cheated on you with like three other Amway chicks. Yes. So boyfriend number two is your current boyfriend. Yes, and he's a saint. <laughs> so boyfriend, okay, so when you say, were you, were you with boyfriend number one at the time that you found out he cheated on you? No, and that's where I'm sorry. That's where I screwed up. Okay, so you know how you like combine the whole story in your brain? Okay, so the timeline. And that's perfect for you to like edit it. <laughs> so it makes sense. <laughs> okay. The timeline. I dated num boyfriend number one for two and a half years. Okay. Everything was fine, but I saw he was weird with other women. So we cut it off. Okay. Because I didn't feel secure and we always would get together at night. You know what that means? Right. Like there's no relationship. Right. I felt very insecure, very upset, very depressed throughout the whole relationship. I knew something was off and there was one girl that I absolutely hated in the team. And I didn't know why. I'm like, why do I hate you so much? But I, I just couldn't stand her. And my uplines were like, why are you beefing with her? I'm like, I don't know, just can't stand her, you know? <laughs> so after, after like a year, I started dating my boy, my current boyfriend, boyfriend number two. In the beginning of my relationship with boyfriend number two, I um, already started getting depressed. I already started, you know, getting through all the stuff, being depressed and thinking about suicide and all of that stuff. I, um, I cheated on my number two with number one because I thought this was over. My life was over. So I made that mistake. And my boyfriend knows it now, you know, we're working through it, you know, and so it's, it's been a, it's not the, I will own up to it because if somebody hears the story and knows that I am here, that it's me, I want them to know that, that I'm not just painting them as a bad guy. I'm a bad guy too. I did something wrong and I own up to it. And me and my boyfriend now are working through it. So, um, after a year, after a year, um, I'm at the mall and I see my upline's fiance and she, her and I started talking. I thought she was my friend. She was like, well, you've heard that your boyfriend number one is currently dating that chick that you hated all the time. And I was like, huh, interesting. How long have they been together? And she's like, oh, probably like three years. I'm like, oh, three years. Interesting. And I was like, okay, because she knew I was with him too right. at the time when I was, I was like, huh, interesting. And then she said, huh, that's what makes me so angry. She said, he was actually dating X, Y, and Z 
at the same time. I'm like, I, when I heard that, I saw red. I saw red. Honestly, I lost my mind because I was thinking while I was in this relationship with boyfriend number one, I thought it was crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. And then women intuition never lies. I mean, you know, I wasn't crazy. Oh yeah, cheaters will and, do that. Yeah, they'll make you feel crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I saw red. I freaked out, came to my current boyfriend. I was like, can you believe this guy? And blah, blah, blah. And that's already after I cheated on him with him. And he didn't know yet. He didn't know yet. Okay. So what happened was, um, when quarantine started, me and my current boyfriend were spending a lot of time at my place and him and I were in separate teams. So I was applying to one people. He was applying to other people. We weren't in the same tree, if you will. Your current boyfriend um, number two? Number two. Yes. So I was in the meeting with my upline and my upline heard him in my room. So he was like, okay, I know somebody's there and I know who that is. So they called my boyfriend number two and they're like turn your camera around and he's like why he's like you're with her aren't you and and then he's like yeah we are together so they caught us you know it was a big deal they caught us and you're consenting I, adults like then there's nothing to catch but we broke the rule whatever so we are on camera my upline is freaking out saying, oh, I thought you were my friends. You did this to me. And I'm thinking the whole time, like, what do you mean we did this to you? The only thing we did were like, we lied, but we're adults. Like, give me a break. We wanted to be together. Yes, we lied. We broke the rule. But what, what do you expect when you put a hundred people, good looking people in their twenties, single in one room, and they have no lives outside of this organization? What do you expect? And you and your brother both are dating and married to someone outside of, like in the organization like what kind of example are you showing and why are you upset this i hope everybody recognizes this is cult 101 like right here trying to control your love life trying yeah. to control who you interact with trying to only have you working on their business having convincing you to to leave school to do it yep. full time because it'll be better for you. This is this is the most teen drama I have ever heard about. And oh my gosh, this is crazy. Well, so as a 1099 contract worker, they cannot tell you anything like that. They cannot set any rules for you when it comes to your business whatsoever, other than what's in Amway's policies and procedures. That's it. Yeah. That's all you're allowed, you have to agree to for that. Like that is so illegal. For them to be like, you can't meet so and so. I had no hard. idea. That's abs. I, that's crazy. Yeah, I've been a 1099 contractor my whole life, um, other than like a few jobs I had in between. But uh, yeah, as a hairstylist and then as in an MLM, like that's crazy to me that they tried to put those rules on you. Um, so I'm glad you and your current boyfriend were able to get through that and work on it. We're actually about to celebrate our second year anniversary in okay. April, which is awesome. So we got through it we're good we're happy together the only thing that's in the middle of us is mlm but we agreed not to speak of it you know we just agreed this is a topic we don't talk about i am very independent i do whatever i want to have my own money like i spend it on stuff travel do whatever and he has these meetings so (laughs) you know we're meeting in the middle somewhere Um, um so okay tell me about you you got kicked out of amway you said yeah. because of the relationship go tell me about that this is mind-boggling to me yeah so technically it wasn't amway it was the team i was part of you know what i mean so amway did not send me a termination letter it was not that so just you know technically and legally i have to probably say that so when they found out that um him and i were together i blurred out something crazy I said you know what the reason I didn't say we were together because I was together with this other guy and I found out this guy was cheating on me with other chicks and I said the reason why I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to screw your team up you know I I honestly did not want to shake the waters I was like I am good with just like leaving it alone building my business quotes on quotes whatever Mm -hmm. and be free you know what I forgive the guy 
I mean, I hate him, but whatever. And I blurred it out and they're like, you did what? I said everything. So that's where it, it's just drama, drama, drama. Like, I'm like, get a life. Can we just like, just get our own lives? Like, why are you so excited about my life? Anyways, um, yeah. Um, they had a meeting with all of their uplines and like, what are we gonna do? So they're like, we have to hear the story. So guess what? They called the guy in, my boyfriend number one. He had to tell everything to all the uplines about what happened. And his girlfriend that he was cheating with on me, she broke up with him. And then they called me in to tell my story. And like, they found out I was cheating. And technicality of it, if anybody asks, they'll be like, she was not kicked out. She was, she was cheating on her boyfriend and we decided we don't want her in my, on our team anymore. But that's not what happened. They just, they, that's it. It was over. No matter oh, like okay. Hold whether on. I'm with my boyfriend or not or whatever. How many people were in this room that you had to like, how many people were on this jury, this illegal jury that you had to go in front of and stand and tell your story to about your relationship? It was five. Five people, five of my uplines, yep. And then, then after that, my female upline called me up and said, hey, can you meet with even higher uplines and share your story? I'm like, I'm not doing that. That's embarrassing. Why would I do that? Why would I, like, first of all, I thought this was gonna be like, it's gonna be my secret until I die. Or maybe eventually I'll say something. <laughs> like honestly like why am I supposed to share my dirty laundry with all of you like to make you guys feel better about your lives are you kidding me like yeah so I said no so I put, put my foot down I'm like I'm not doing that wow wow so mm -hmm. that is a t I would I would think that's a type of psychological abuse because you know yeah. I don't condone cheating you no longer condone cheating yeah. Everybody no, not at all. I believe that, but to bring you in like that, and you're not even an employee in the U.S. You're a 1099 contract worker. You're not entitled to give them anything whatsoever at all. Like not your upline, nobody, nobody on your team, nothing. Like literally, the only thing you're supposed to give to anybody is to follow the policies and procedures uh, by yeah. the same way. So that is some type of ridiculous manipulation that is literally cult like that sounds like scientology like how they the yeah. people in their c organization they don't allow them to date or like marry around or have kids like it's crazy holy crap so so they said to you we don't want you on the team anymore but then they let him stay so they let my boyfriend stay but what about the other yeah. guy boyfriend number one no they 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 kicked him out too so well what yeah what did they say to me where you were like okay i guess i'll quit or like how did that come down what what happened so <laughs> the way they made it sound like basically well i want to acknowledge something that they never even acknowledged the fact that i almost killed myself that i was depressed you know like nobody <laughs> i was like gone for 30 hours nobody heard from me i'm not that kind of person i text you i call you we're in touch i was gone for 30 hours where was i mm -hmm. you know nobody asked that nobody concerned about it you know and i have a very traumatic childhood and my very traumatic i was adopted so there's a reason for it like where there's abuse alcohol all of that stuff it was bad and you know what my upline told me you're an adult now it's time to get over it Ooh. And then he said, you know what? You need to mentally heal and you need to mentally like get strong. And he's a person who's, and he's a person who's coming from very privileged family, very privileged household. He had no struggles in his life. Never. Right. It's yeah. Th there's that toxic positivity and I'm sorry you went through that. You didn't deserve any of that. You mentioned you hadn't, you weren't around for 30 hours and they didn't contact you. So were, you had to like stay in contact with them like all the time, like check in. Yeah. What happened? Like, well, they call it like upline communication has to be on point. 
basically if you reach out to your upline you don't you don't even have to expect them to get back to you because they tell them they tell you oh we're so busy whatever they came back to you in three days that's acceptable if they text you you have to reply right away you know and if you don't it's like oh what are you doing where are you at who are you with you know what i mean like one time i told them oh i'm going to the bar with my girlfriend's like oh you're going to the bar okay so they labeled me as an alcoholic of the team like seriously <gasps> i'm not kidding and then one time they came over and they saw like a bottle of vodka like just for you know how you put it out and it's there mm-hmm. whatever my upline my girl upline looked at it is like mm. you know like oh yeah and like everything we said about her is true she's an alcoholic you know like <gasps> it yeah it's so anyways nobody reached out to me nothing my phone was silent nobody cared I literally took a ton of thinking that I'm not gonna wake up and I woke up in 30 hours and I'm sure there's a plan whatever but yeah it was unnoticed and I said and I told them I told one of my uplines that I trusted um that's you know I was like this is what happened and he made me tell my whole story to him and honestly I didn't feel comfortable but he said the only way you'll move on if you tell everything to me so I told him everything about sexual abuse, about physical abuse of my childhood. And I feel like this is so inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Now I think it's inappropriate. I'm like, who are you? You're not my therapist. And he said, you have to open up. He's like, you're a rock. And it would tell me I'm too nice or I'm too mean. And I was so confused the whole time. Like, wait, hold on. Who am I supposed to be? Am I too nice or am I too mean? Like, can I be myself? And they're like, your current self is too negative and you're just a mean person because I have an RBF and I have like, I share my thoughts, like, how dare I? You know what I mean? Resting face, is that what you're talking about, RBF? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I have one too. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, no, women should not be told to smile or just look positive for any reason, I hate that. But that's, you went through so much emotional and psychological abuse, honestly, and I hope that you're able to, if you haven't already, find a good therapist who's qualified yeah. and maybe trauma or something because what you went through it sounds like with your childhood but then what the mlm put you through your team i mean that was so wrong on the highest level literally that is the most cult thing i have heard coming from the mlm industry <laughs> and I've, i had seen, seen some things <laughs> um, yeah. so how did it go with are you talking again to your family um you know what how how did you kind of wrap up like tell me about when you decided to quit how things went there or I guess when you were kind of forced to quit yeah well my family really liked my boyfriend number two like they loved them they loved them like more than me so since we started dating uh my boyfriend kind of put me back in my family he's like you need to be with your family you know you need to because I was so against them. I'm like, they're against me. They don't support my business. They don't support me. They don't want me to be happy or whatever, which I was miserable. Um, so I started recovering my relationship with them like two years ago. Um, but when I quit, I mean, my mom told me, my mom and I are very close and she told me in the beginning what she felt about it, but she said, I'm gonna just tell you once and I want you to try it by yourself. You know, Maybe you will succeed and make millions of dollars or maybe you'll just lose a lot of money and." It's rather be all well versus what if, you know? Um, Yeah, so my relationship is fine right now, you know? They don't say anything about it. They know that my boyfriend is in it and we all just love him for who he is. And I am showing him these videos that I've seen from you and from other people. And it's like, you have to take a look at this. You know, this is, and once you're in it, it's hard for you to even open up your mind and to something else. So I understand where he's coming from. Kim and I have like long-term plans of getting married and having kids. And I said, well, if you're not making money by the time we have kids, then you'll have to leave. Right now he's breaking even. He has a good team. Like, but if he doesn't make money that he promises he will, then you have no excuse. You have to take care of your kids first and your wife potentially. Yeah. Um. This is so interesting. So he was there the whole time that you decided to leave or well, no, when you were forced to leave and you were put through all that emotional and psychological abuse and had to retell your story, he was there. And did he stick up for you to the team or what did he say? 
<laughs> well, that's that's very interesting because he he said that he sees in me more than they do and that I'm bigger than all of this and you know things happen for a reason with her and you know yes she cheated but we went through a lot of stuff with the cheating but he did tell them that like I was going through a very hard time in my life and we just started dating that was like in the beginning of it you know other than that he didn't say he never said anything to protect I did not feel protected honestly and I told them several times you never stood up for me and he says I did stand up for you because I said all these things about you I'm like yeah but what about everything else you know how he is just gotta love the guy but he's just so up their butt you know uplines can do never they can never do wrong they can never do wrong and when we went on vacation for my birthday last year he was on the phone with them the whole time you know and they blamed him for focusing on his personal life versus you know his business when he was on vacation with me for three days oh my god like forbid you know what i mean well <sighs> so. I'm sorry you went through that because i mean you should have been stuck up for especially if it was somebody you know who you're with yeah. and claims to love you you should have been they should have had your back um and i think that you know they're not in their right mind at the same time it doesn't excuse their behaviors right like in an mlm yeah. we were victims but we were also perpetrators because we recruited people but that i mean they literally took it so many steps above and that makes me really sad um for you because you were treated so wrong and it sounds like you were literally totally alone with it and yeah and i don't want to uh, sorry go ahead no okay. go ahead i said i don't want to look like a victim here you know i don't want to be like poor me and be upset um because i did the wrong things as well mm -hmm. but like it does i my point of this whole interview because i was debating it for so long i've been watching you for almost a year you know and i'm like i need to talk to her something like literally last night i fell asleep to one of your videos <laughs> oh. like, like seriously it just like just assures me that everything i'm doing is right you know what i mean because my mind goes back and forth and oh, yeah um uh, the reason for this interview is just for me to share that story and share that even if you screwed up, what they're doing is not right. They know what they're doing. It's never like, oh, we didn't know. You know, they know exactly what they're doing. And I feel like, especially with Amway, people are afraid to step out and say something because of the control that there is. And that's why I didn't see any videos of Amway. Like, I didn't see anybody speak out. I saw some like little tiny, like 50 views videos. I'm like, what's going on? People need to speak up. Because yeah, I know there's more. That's why it's always interested in me and why I've kind of, I, I don't hold any MLM in um, good regard. I've always looked down, I look down on all MLMs, but Amway is one of the ones that I've just like really, I, I felt like for a long time that there was a lot of um, not great things happening. And your story really confirms that. I think that, you know, it's okay to come out of it and say, you know, I'm not playing a victim. I am picking myself up and I am moving on with my life and make, making things happen. But at the same time, language is important. And I think it's okay to say I was a victim of this and two wrongs don't make a right. Like, you know, they should never have just because you did something wrong doesn't mean that they should have came at you like that. Um, but that's psychological and emotional abuse. I mean, that's absolutely insane to me everything you went through on, on top of losing forty thousand dollars yeah i could have had a house dude i'm looking at houses now i'm like damn it i could have had a house <laughs> you know these people oh are my god friends. so what um what is, tell me about your life now are you how are you picking up the pieces because i think that a lot of people like you watch anti MLM content, um, but they're still having to convince themselves like I'm making the right choice by leaving. And I know I had to convince myself of that for a long time because in the back of my head, I was like, am I making the right choice? Like, could I find like a good MLM and make money in it and help people? And like, because I had been so indoctrinated to believe that network marketing was the way. So I think it's, yeah. it's great that you're picking up the pieces. How are you picking up those pieces now? How are you moving on with your life? 
Yeah, so I did go through therapy, like IFS therapy. I don't know if you're familiar with IFS. Yeah. Um, it's internal family systems. So I'm not a good person of like just talking my feelings, but IFS is semi hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy. So you go inside and you like talk to your heart and you talk to your laughing parts. So it's different parts of you. So that's very healing to me. And I spoke to my heart and I spoke to my gut of when it says like you needed to leave and I, and I ignored it. It's, it's weird, but it's therapy. So I went through a very, I'm not <laughs> went through very extensive, thank you, <laughs> very extensive therapy. I'm still going through it. Um, obviously, I'm focusing on my career. I'm working for a tech company. I'm doing really, really well for myself. I'm about to move to my own place. I live with a roommate now, but I've got a, I got a condo in a sky rise. And it's so exciting, you know, I'm just actually finally doing something I love I actually am taking dance classes and pole classes <laughs> yeah I know so I'm actually doing stuff I really love you know and I I am having girl time and I'm doing all these things that I didn't do for four years you know I lost my semi-adulthood in the beginning when you hack fun you know I'm supposed to be serious now an adult but I'm doing all of it now because I missed it you know so just taking care of myself and focusing on getting healthier and just getting more sleep and relaxing for the first time. I mean, I'll, I'll work probably like 17 hours a day or 18 hours altogether, you know, with work and Amway. So yeah, I hope I, that answers it. I think that's fantastic. I think that those little things really add up. I think therapy is a big thing. I think everybody, if they can afford to, should be in it after leaving an MLM because yeah. You don't realize all these tactics that have been used on you and they stay with you. They stay in your mindset. That's why they're called commercial cults. All these things stay in your mindset and swirl around. And it's, it's hard to decipher what you know is real and what you were taught to believe by somebody who didn't have your best interest in heart. And yeah. I think those little things you said, like taking dance classes or, you know, going, getting rest, like, I mean, for me, it was sitting my butt down on the couch and watching hours of TV because I didn't watch TV for almost six years, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to catch up on all these awesome shows. And, <laughs> and it's those little things that just help you feel normal again that make yeah. a really big difference. I want to tell you, like, thank you so much for reaching out and coming on to share your story because I think you'll speak to a lot of people. Um, and I think that, you know, when people leave an MLM, they're not proud of mm -hmm. what they did in an MLM and that can keep them from speaking out. And I think that you were brave to share the problems that you and your current partner had. And that was, that's not easy to share at all, but you know, mm -mm you can own up where you're wrong. And I think that's really important. Um, and to share that because it really, your, what your MLM did, your team is they took your wrong and then they tried to pin that against you, even though you were already like, I know I screwed up. I know I messed up. I know I made a, made a mistake. I'm, I'm human. They illegally use that against you to force you to quit your business. And even though it was probably a blessing in disguise because now you're out of it, it was so yeah. wrong how it all went about. And like, you should have never yeah. went through that. Well, I really, really appreciate that. This is my sort of therapy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Well, are you in yeah. any anti-MLM groups or anything like that online? Yeah, on Facebook. And there's like, sounds like MLM, but okay. It's so funny. Like they're put the funniest stuff over there. Um, yeah, all of them. It's, it's so funny. It's so refreshing. You know what I mean? It's so nice. I really liked Monica Hayworth's group. Shout out to Monica. Monica oh, yeah. Monica has a great group. That was the group that really encouraged me to speak out because I don't know if I would have had the guts to speak out originally. Yeah. Um, what would you tell somebody who is leaving an MLM or wants to leave an MLM, but they're worried about all the time and money they've invested? Um, mm -hmm you know, what would you say to them? And like, how is your life different now and better? Yeah, I would tell them that they're brave enough to even think of leaving, you know, because being wrapped up in an MLM, obviously it is a cold and it's so hard to leave it, you know? So I'm, I will say like, trust your gut, you know, if it feels wrong, most likely it is wrong, you know, and just don't let anybody else persuade you not to, 
do what you have to do. If you have to slam a door in, on your outline, do it, whatever. If they cross the boundary, call it out. Yeah. That's what I was afraid of doing. I would, I would never speak back to my upline. I'll be so scared, you know, speak up, you know, say that doesn't feel right. That's wrong. Yeah. You know, and my life is so much better right now. Honestly, I'm still having that post-dramatic, traumatic, whatever the word is, you know, you always think like, like, what are they thinking of me now? Like, what, what if they see this video? And you know what? This is great. I hope they see this video. <laughs> I pray to God they see this video and send it to me. It's like, hey, is that you, Jane Doe? Whatever. I you would know, get restraining hope- orders on these people. I'm not even playing. <laughs> you try and bring my personal life into business, honey, mm-hmm. you're going to learn. Like, I'm not even playing. I, <laughs> they cross so many boundaries, sis. Like, you yeah. need to put them a cease and desist. Yeah. I would just say, just leave. Don't think about it. Just go, just go and return your products. Don't be afraid of them being like, don't return your products. One thing I regret of not doing, I have so much stuff that I could have returned and gotten my money back. And I chose not to just use it. You know, I could have gotten my money back like thousands of dollars. Mm. Like I have this stupid water filter. It was a thousand dollar filter. And I'm like, it's just like a regular filter. What the heck? (laughs) I wish I could have returned it, but I can't because six months is over, you know? Mm. Or like luxury creams. I could have like gotten at least $2,500 out of everything, you know? So don't be afraid to return your stuff. Don't be afraid to stand up to your upline and just, you know, that's it. Get out of the boat. Get out. Just get out. Get the hell out. Call us. We'll come get you. Like seriously. Yeah. There's a lifeboat. There's a lifeboat in the anti-MLM community. We'll pick you up. (laughs) We'll pick you up. Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it.